You hear a roar in the distance. According to the townsfolk, it is a very recent phenomenon. Rumor in the village has it that it might be the dragon. Sounds like a dragon. The man Ugh. says the fishing industry is usually thriving in their seaside town. But recently, nets have been coming up empty. He mentions watch. that even the fishing harbor to the northwest has been suffering from poor hauls of late. <laughs> Muscle my hand. Nutrition clinic? Yes. I like to buy some armor. Um... Oh my. Plus 10 attack. I'm buying that for sure. I've got 10k. I don't care. Yes. Why not? Yeah. To buy an equipment. I don't care about her. Ooh. Four hundred gold. Yeah, why not? I'm still all the other stuff as well. Uh, hopefully. Now he's got better gear. Hmm. I don't really need those rings. I mean, sure, they'd be helpful. But if there's a ring that can do, that can protect me from all of them. So that brings a no. Ooh. Twenty-four, twenty-seven, twenty-three, twenty. Yeah, not really major boost. Nine, eight, thirteen, fifteen. I think I'd rather buy this. I'm not going to buy them. Sell. Wait, uh, if you made it this far in the video, let me know what equipment I should buy. What, what equipment equipment I should buy for those three. Because I'd be grateful. I'm grateful. I'd be very appreciated. I'll be very grateful for that. I will be. Upset. Uh, I'll sell those later. Nutrition clinic. There is a sign on the door. Not home. Come back later. Not okay. home. Come back later. Item shop. Let's see what he has. Things I don't care about. Coffee carry. Help me, I help you. Let me buy potions. Eh. Oh boy.
I'll buy five of these. We'll buy five of those. Yes. And I'll buy ten. No, five. Oh, is that a little four? Okay, I guess. Meh. No, thank you. A troubled woman tells you that there has been a rise in thefts lately. She speculates the recession to be the cause. That would do it. She claims that even the cold medicine she always has on hand has disappeared. Okay. She narrows her eyes at the crowd, suspecting there is a thief among what crowd? them, and offers I've a reward a crowd. for the return of the medicine. Your ears perk <laughs> up at the word reward. Typical MC. You immediately agree to help expose the dirty thief. So is the crowd? Is it you? I can feel the dragon's presence. I must inform Lady Winifred. The knight mutters. Fuck her. You feel impatient, determined not to let the order beat you to it. Oh. Hello. You approach a woman sneaking around in a corner of town. Yes. She clearly is. Hearing your voice, she turns in surprise. You see a vial of cold medicine clutched Give me that medicine hands. back. <laughs> you explain that the person she stole it from needs it back. The woman begins to explain her own situation with downcast eyes. Oh. My poor little boy is bedridden, she says tearfully. He needs medicine, but I don't have any money, so I took it. Oh. Oh, no, I didn't want that. Theft is wrong. You ignore her excuses. And I didn't want that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, my boy. She whispers, her voice breaking with tears as she totters away. You feel bad for her and her child, but know you must return the medicine to its rightful owner. Now to receive your reward. Would have given him money for it. The woman thanks you for returning the medicine and bestows you with a reward. Yes. Mysterious card number six. Missing medicine. I'm sure, if you made the right choice, you return to your journey with a heavy heart. You forced that choice game he for he forced it on me you set foot inside the inn only to be greeted with the great clanging of a bell congratulations the innkeeper shouts Ooh, above thank the joy you. it would appear you and your companions are this inn's ten thousandth customers that means you've won the lifetime of free stays pass okay whatever Necessary, but okay. Eh. Eh. Yes. Oh, well, she didn't get the medicine. Oh, I'll just matter. Fuck it. To Unionville. Oh, I should have brought a fucking torch. Oh, I'll buy a torch from here. See something approaching from up ahead. I saw him. A monster, Melanie shouts, Hold readying up. for battle. Gonna attack. <laughs> Mr. Flobby, get back here. It's dangerous out there. <laughs> a young girl chides, taking the creature back to the village. It seems you've finally arrived at Unionville, a village where humans and monsters live yes. together in peace. So it seems. What a weird place, remarks Riddus lightheartedly. I like it. Cool. We aren't staying a moment longer than necessary, says an unsettled <laughs> Melanie, her distaste for monsters plain on her face. 
Ask the denizens of Union Unionville what they know about the dragon. I'll do it later. Bye. What do you have? Okay, just the same shit as the other store. I assume they're gonna have the same stuff as well. Cool. Item shop. Bye. I need torches. Didn't have a torch. Yep. The woman frowns deeply. Claiming the cakes she bought for her beloved furball have all been eaten by someone else. Just buy more cake. The quiet furball sits with crumbs around its mouth. The child says his monster friend left the village suddenly to go back home. He claims the headman told him that he could go home when he grew up too. The little orc child pouts, but I don't uh -huh. know where my home is. Uh -huh. no sad. Who cares? You ask <laughs> the old man if he knows anything about the dragon. No, sir, he answers. All I know is that it brings more trouble to this already troubled world. But our headman is a wise and worldly man. He might know something, he remarks, pointing at a house like that. not far away. Cool. Goblin. The little goblin sulks. Kill it. He gazes upon the withering flowers he tried so desperately to take care of. He looks at you with tears in his eyes, silently begging you for help. Wait, so what happened? Okay. Oh, water. They must be thirsty, you think to yourself. Then douse the flowers in water until. Stop, stop! The goblin shrieks angrily. You're drowning them. If it were that easy, the goblin says. He would have done it himself. Oh. You pour sure. the salve onto the flowers and they stand up tall. The goblin cries out in You're happiness welcome. and thanks you for your help. I'm going to kill you next time. He then holds mm -hmm. something out to you. Oh, is it a card? It's a card. Number five. Sweet. Beautiful blossom. The goblin stares lovingly at the beautiful flowers. And gobbles them up. Rude. Healthy flowers are the tastiest, he proclaims in glee. Did he grow those flowers just to eat them? Rude. A young boy wanders up to your group in wide-eyed wonder. You surmise his curiosity stems from the lack of travelers visiting we'll the village. You realize you are right when he assails you with questions about your origins and adventures. The yeah, Inquisition really? leaves you exhausted. Really? Oh, I love the story. It's a slime. However, does your mouth become so <laughs> filthy, Mr. Flobby? Oh no! The girl, as she wipes the slime clean. The slime made it. The cake. Clearly embarrassed, Mr. Flobby murmurs, "That's not my mouth." Ooh. Oh my. The little orc child is engrossed in a fairy tale. The title reads, "The Legend of the Dragon." Okay, cool. He 
You take a peek into the picture book and come across a passage that piques your interest. <laughs> really? <laughs> Defeated by the king's army, the dragon hid itself away. Where, you wonder? Then recall that this is merely a fairy tale. <laughs> you sure about that? You sure about that? <laughs> the village headman is a renowned gourmet, and rumor has it he only dines on the finest foods. <laughs> The man says he wishes he, too, could have such a lavish meal just once in his life. His deep desire for delicacies only growing with time. How did he ask? Fury's, Fury's friend just asked. Not that hard. Wow, a new friend and so big, too, the furball <laughs> exclaims in glee as it rushes over to Mar. Well, Mar stares off into the distance as the fur ball <laughs> snuggles up to his leg. For some reason, Riddus <laughs> joins in on the cuddling. Adorable. Lately, a suspicious man cloaked in black has been seen wandering about the village outskirts. Really? The old woman looks at Melanie and remarks that he was dressed just like her. Okay. Travelers, Ooh. you hear a voice call from somewhere. Yes. Down here, Ooh. at thy feet, you look down to see a small clump of fur by your boots. Whatever. The clump of fur speaks. I am Lappy, and I should like to journey forth with thee. Lappy the Furball looks at you with amiable expectations. Of course, the more the yes, merrier, it's you exclaim, pumping your fist energetically into the air. But Melanie coldly interjects, <gasps> No, I can't trust monsters. Thoroughly rejected by Melanie, Lappy bursts into tears. Yes! Lappy says he has no friends because of his aged face and speech. All alone, he decided to leave the village on a journey. Aww. Your party is silenced by the crying child with the face of a grown man. <laughs> you tell Melanie to be nice and quip that both she and Lappy could use a friend. Yes. Agreed. Exhausted from arguing with you, Melanie half-heartedly <laughs> agrees. Fine, we can be friends. However, she says that they are on a dangerous journey <laughs> to defeat the dragon. As such, they cannot take a child wow. with them. Oh, rude. Lappy leaps up and hugs her in his excitement, <laughs> exclaiming, Thou hast made me so happy. Aww. Yay! Till next time, Melanie says, peeling Lappy off of her and placing him on the ground. Though she thought all monsters to be evil, Melanie feels that the ones here are yes, different. Yes, they are indeed. Finally, a friend. To the elder man's house. Yes, we shall. Boink. Boink. You bow, but before you can speak, the man suddenly introduces himself as the village headman. He laughs, then shamelessly praises his own village as being wondrous and peaceful. And who are you? He asks. Well... After explaining that you are on a quest to defeat the dragon, the headman invites you to rest your feet a bit in his village. He says that he had heard rumors of the dragon when he traveled the world. Okay. You must be tired from your journey. Have a seat. I will have my chef prepare a feast, the headman says, then claps his hands twice to summon a stewardess.
Ooh, yum. Extravagant dishes that you have never seen before are placed on the table before you, each one looking more delicious than the last. Yoni. You're drooling, <laughs> Melanie scowls. You hadn't even noticed. You wipe your mouth with your sleeve, <laughs> then gasp as you turn to Mar. Perhaps in an attempt to hold himself back, Mar is gnawing on the table corner. There, there. We'll eat soon, you reassure Mar while gently stroking his head. The oh. doors fly open in the next instant, and a girl runs in. With tears in her eyes, she tells you that her dear companion, Mr. Flobby the Slime, is missing. Oh, wow. Well. The headman's eyes go wide in surprise. We must find that slime right away, he says anxiously. Why? You are starving, but it doesn't look like you'll be able to partake of the feast before you because of Mr. Flobby's disappearance. Damn slime. I you will even... find your slime, and then I did it again. Feast. I did it again. I even pulled it completely. Melanie reminds you that you are here to get clues about the dragon from the headman. What's the difference? Literally everything. Hunger taking its toll. You two begin to argue. Brave heroes. The headman interjects, then bows his head. Would you please Just find food your first. Come on. It appears the story has hit a standstill until you find the missing Mr. Flobby. You need to hear the whole story from the young girl. Okay. Find out what Mr. Flobby's friend has to tell. Sure, where is she? The girl sobs, wailing about the missing Mr. Make a free food for this. Melanie places her hand atop the girl's head and promises that your party will find her companion. The girl then hands something to Melanie. It looks like the muddy handkerchief she used to wipe oh. Mr. Flobby. She asks Melanie to wipe Mr. Flobby with it after you find him. Why? The girl claims to have searched the village, but cannot find her friend anywhere. Regardless, looking aimlessly outside the village would be a waste of time. You decide to collect more information in the village. Yes. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Let's stop here. Ah, you. Old lady. She says she saw a suspicious man in black with a slime outside the village not long ago. Okay. She claims they went northwest together. Probably going to be the cave. Did that man take Mr. Flobby? You resolved to leave the village in search of the pair. Northwest. It's probably going to be the cave. Guarantee it. Yes. Check his name was trying for any signs of Mr. Flobby. Your footing is obscured in the dimness of the shrine. You should probably proceed with caution. You go f I think you made the right choice. Yes. You I take think a I did. good look at the floor and see it lined in trails of viscous liquid. No doubt a slime or okay. two hundred have passed through okay. here. You! It looks like poor Mr. Flobby is being held captive by the mystery man. Hand over that slime, you shout to the man in the dark. You speak as if I kidnapped him, he remarks, curtly turning to face you. Well, you did, didn't you? 
When your eyes finally adjust to the surrounding darkness, you realize the man's clothes look eerily similar to Melanie's. Are they dark? Because I've got different character art on. Melanie's mouth falls open in surprise. Brother? It seems the man has noticed Melanie as well. It looks like the two know each other. The man says that he and Melanie came from the same village, where this was their native dress. Really? The man's revelation makes you realize that you know almost nothing about Melanie's past. They're probably siblings. You ask her if he is a childhood friend, but she holds her tongue. Then the man speaks. With forbidden magic, our clan has ensured the dragon. He begins when Melanie cuts in. She rattles on about the man, telling you that he is Vince, a lunatic obsessed with the dragon. Saw that coming. Vince resentfully claims that he is searching for the noble dragon to protect it. You ran away from home with your tail between your legs, he ridicules. Enraged, Melanie lunges at Vince. You have so many questions, but realize that the most pressing matter is getting Mr. Flop yes. back. So you're ready for battle. I forgot to save. Careful, he won't go down easy. Understood. What? Oh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yes! Freeze him! Pog! Resist! Oh! Ow! Hey, you want that's how you want to play, huh? Fuck. Oh, yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> Oh, nice, nice. During the fight, Vince asks, Do you know the truth about that village? No, I don't care. The may look like a nice old man, but he keeps those little monsters around too. He begins, but before he can finish... Oops. Of course they Winifred, come back in. Hedwin and Berwin of the Ivory Order. The three brush you aside, fixing their attention on Vince. So you are the one who disturbs the beast, assholes. They exclaim, then charge at him. The Ivory Order and that false justice they serve are the true evil here. He retaliates, fighting back. Try six B. Seeing the two parties occupied with each other, you realize <laughs> this is your yes, chance is. to grab Mr. Flobby. That objective save, Mr. Flobby. Perhaps wary of humans, Mr. Flobby dashes out Aww. when you draw near. Yes. Vince is on equal footing with the three from the Order. You realize then that he wasn't wow. fighting in earnest against you earlier. Right. Engrossed in their battle, the combatants pay you no mind. Right. I'll be 
super smart guy. Leave the area. When you reach out to grab Mr. Flobby, <gasps> nice. he suddenly attacks. Lower Mr. Flobby's stamina to calm him down. We shall defeat him. from the fight the raging mr flobby finally stops attacking sweet but it seems he hasn't yet come to his senses he glares warily at your party understandable find something to help return mr flobby to normal here's the handkerchief you wipe mr flobby's <laughs> mouth with the handkerchief you yes received his mouth girl Then you hear a quiet voice speak. That's not my mouth, Mr. <laughs> Flobby murmurs bashfully. It looks like the girl's familiar scent on the handkerchief returned him to normal. This is Having regained his senses, Mr. Flobby, you place the increasingly sticky handkerchief in your bag. Cool. I guess. Yes, we ain't in Unionville. The ball. Flappy approaches and tells you that Mr. Flobby has returned. That's good. That is very good. Talk with Mr. Flobby now that he is safely within the confines of Unionville. Boom. There we go. Hello, Mr. The girl Slime. Is ecstatic that Mr. Flobby is finally back home. I'm happy for you, Melanie says with a smile as she returns the handkerchief. The girl bows her head and thanks you. Good. Daddy. Now where's my food? <laughs> Mr. Flobby looks as slimy as ever. You just hope it's a happy slime. Yes. The headman wants us to bring Mr. Flobby to him. Would you mind? You ask. Sure. Of course not. But bring him back soon, she answers with a bright smile. With a bright smile. Let me guess. He's going to kill the slime. Wait. Puffy dog. Yes. We shall do that. We returned yet again. He's probably gonna kill the slime, isn't he? I am so happy to see you safe and sound, the headman exclaims, giving Mr. Flobby a hug. Thank you. You explain everything that happened, including the incident with Vince and the Ivory Order. He expresses his relief that the Order will be taking care of the criminal. He then thanks you for your hard work and instructs his stewardess to prepare dinner for your party. Thank you. You can feel your collective mouths watering at the sight of the lavish meal before you. You, Mar, and Riddus immediately dig in. You aren't sure where you find a moment to breathe among all the feasting. Nice. Oh, what do I do? 
I think I clipped something. Please eat to your heart's content, the headman insists with a smile. Thank you. Once your belly is full, you realize that Mr. Flobby is gone. <gasps> and then. Is that what you're eating? For dessert, the headman asks, offering you a plate of slimy jelly. You feel your stomach churning at the very sight of it. I saw that coming. The color strikes you as familiar, and the stickiness sends a shiver down your spine. Is... is this Mr. Yep. Flobby? You ask the headman, your voice trembling in disbelief. Unfortunately. Yes. The headman looks at you with a plain expression, one that holds no malice. Is that a problem? He questions back. This dish is a masterpiece, he remarks with a light-hearted chuckle as he gazes at the jelly. Kill him! And I have you brave heroes to thank for it. Had you not brought that slime back, we would not be able to enjoy this exquisite dessert. Kill him. I want to kill him. You move to leave, but the headman stops you. I try to get my meat while it's still young and tender, but at least your pet is very plump, he remarks, licking his lips. No! He points at Mar and asks, Would oh. you consider leaving that creature here with me? No. Never, you refuse flatly, not bothering to hide your discomfort. Think about it, he entreats. And then... You grab the headman by his lapels, hands trembling in fury. He is not for sale. He is a friend. You monster. No, he needs to be purified. <laughs> he needs to be smited. He needs to be killed, not unconscious. You pummel the headman with all your might. Curled up on the ground, the headman groans in pain, but insists that monsters were meant to be eaten. You hug Mar tightly, reassuring him that you will not hand him over to anyone. Mar looks at you with his round eyes and mews softly. Meow. You meet eyes with the rest of your party and reach a tacit agreement. Together, you all stand and leave. Yay. Yes. You all stand. We're ready to leave. And you leave. As you are about to leave the headman's house, though, the old God man suddenly charges at you from behind. But Mar, the keener of you two, is quick to block his path. Thank you, Mar. With a crash, Mar <laughs> and the headman tumble to the ground. From the headman's hand falls a small blade. It clatters to the ground, covered in blood. Oh no, Mar! You take the injured Mar to an inn where you can watch over him. You gaze at the unconscious Mar with concern. Oh, no. Despite the shallow wound, no amount of medicine seems to rouse Mar from the bed. I heard that my Lappy. friends were in danger, so I came as quickly as I could, Lappy says. 
As he reaches Mars' bedside, he leans over and licks his wound. Eels? This is what you call an extract, he shouts. <laughs> he explains that it is a poison extracted from a certain monster. If it enters the body, it drastically reduces one's stamina. Hearing those words, you realize the headman's blade must have been coated in this poison. Mars' condition starts to make sense. Oh. Isn't there anything we can do? Melanie asks. Lappy's eyes widen in realization before he places his mouth over Mars' wound and begins sucking. Okay. He then puts the what you call it extract into a bottle and hands it to you. Oh, yay. Lappy says that if you follow the road south of the village, you will that? reach Shoreland. He tells you to give the extract to the famous nutritionist there. Oh, thank you. Realizing that you are at fault for this, you don't hesitate to undertake the quest. But this is strange. The extract comes from a monster, so it should have no effect on one, Lappy remarks with a curious tilt of his head. Because he's not a monster! I don't think I get her equipment, aren't I? I thought a beast of that size would eat us out of house and home, she remarks, no doubt talking about Mar. Yes. We leave. And then becomes all happy go lucky. Yes, buy and equip. Surely have armor that she can equip. Accessory. Boom. Oh, Ma. We shall go get the thing wide. 